First of all, thanks for being here, getting up early, whatever, hanging out. <clears throat> Before I start anything, I want to tell you, I don't have many regrets in my life. But one is that I'm not there in person. We have worked so hard for so many years to get those dates lined up. And then they did. And fiddly D, here comes the virus. So anyway, I was just talking to a group of people the other day. And everybody's dealing with this online. And oh, my gosh. And uh, the kids won't stay online and everything. And this administrator told me, he said, do you know who they stay online for? And I said, no. He goes, music teachers. Because you... It's more than the it's more than the class, isn't it? It's more than the content. You have created this incredible culture. And my guess is that most of us are here right now because of a music teacher. And my guess is you can probably picture that person in your mind too. You know, some like some teacher came along at one time and said, Hey, you know, you're pretty good at this. We like, we are. <laughs> well, maybe I ought to practice. <laughs> And you get better and you get better and you look at that teacher and it's not even like the rest of the teachers, is it? Right. They become a mentor. They become almost a surrogate part of your family. In many cases, they do. And just look how we treat music different. My gosh. You know, they get they get that music teacher every year. Right. They get the math teacher every three or four years. So. That is the importance you play. And I don't think there's ever been a time in history when you haven't been more important than you are right now. So anyway, let's start there. Um, I, I want to go through a couple things here um, and just, you know, show you how different you, than you are than other teachers. <clears throat> other teachers, if you haven't figured this out, like during spring break, they'll go away from their students. Many of you pack yours up and take them somewhere on some trip. Without knowing the insurance implications, by the way, <laughs> don't worry, guilty as charged, right? And other teachers in the summer, they go away from their discipline. We go towards ours. You know, you go to musicals or you band directors are chasing drum corps around. Or it's amazing. It's just amazing. And other teachers come to school when it starts during the day. You've already been there an hour and a half. Other teachers leave at the end of the school day. That's when many of you start. You're different. I don't think other teachers have kids hanging around the rehearsal room either. You do. They want to be with you. And you know, you've all, you've all had this experience. You know, some kid graduates, right? And they go off to school, right? And then they come back to visit high school. Where do they go? They go to see you. You get their Christmas cards. My God, you make such a difference. It's that great uh, Maya Angelou quote that says, they won't remember what you said. They won't remember even what you did. They'll always remember how you made them feel. And I think that's the reason a lot of us here. So, so I know we have elementary music teachers on here. First of all, thank you. You're my favorites. Because if you don't get them, nobody's going to get them. So I just cannot tell you how much respect I have for you elementary music teachers and some of you that have the carts that you drag down the hallway and God bless you. But you know what? Those kids look forward to music. It's music class, music time, music teachers here. Right? And you middle school teachers, good Lord, how do you do that? <laughs> what is it they say? That, that middle school students that they um, like when they watch television, it's every 14 seconds they program something to grab that kid's attention. You got to be a pretty good teacher to hit every 14 seconds. And you do. In fact, I think that may be where the very best teachers are to connect the kids middle school, high school. Guys, <laughs> what we don't do, right? Because it all becomes part of that performance thing. And we go the extra mile and, and you guys that, Gals that do marching band. Oh, and it's it's Louisiana. You know, I've been there in the summer. <laughs> you can't breathe. But yet those kids will stand out on a parking lot for you for hours at a time. I, I don't know how much louder a student has to yell, I love you. They'll do that for you. And then we put them in a wool uniform and see if they can march six miles behind horses. And they do it. They do it. They do it for you. And any, any of the college people on here, thank you. 
because you're stirring it up for the next group to come forward. You're it. You're the one that's going to push them off the cliff to see if they can fly. So way to go. And I know we have some retirees on here too, but we never retire, right? We refire is what we do and we keep at it. What's that great joke that says, <clears throat> if you're lucky enough to get the pearly gates and St. Peter said, uh, what did you do in life? Said I was a music teacher. I said, "Oh, go in. You've been through enough, Ellen. <laughs> it's great." So, things I want to talk about. We we've all heard this. Everybody is replaceable. Everybody's replaceable. Boy, if there was ever a job where people weren't replaceable, it's what you do. It's music teachers because we all know programs that were very robust and, and and the kids were excited and the community was excited and the school was all jazzed about it. And that person left and the program plummeted. Well, what changed? The way we read music changed? Counting changed? Articulation changed? No, the person up front changed. Again, that's how important you are because we know we know the groups are a reflection of us. Sometimes I wish that wouldn't have been true when I, when I was a band director. But when something would go wrong, I just, you got to go look in the mirror, right? And at this time, at this time that we're living in right now, if those young people ever needed to know persistence is worth it, they're following us. What's that great, that there's like a clip from the, uh, from the Ella Wilcox poem that says, one ship sails east, one ship sails west on the same old winds that blow, but it's the set of the sails. It's not the gales that determines the direction they'll go. And you all have your sails set in a very positive way. Otherwise you wouldn't be here this morning. So I don't think everybody's replaceable. And you replace a position, sure, you can do that. But replace a person that connects with a kid at that level, both, both intrinsically, extrinsically, both content and context, get next to their hearts. And, and you're the last, you're the last subject in the school that is expressive. All the rest of the subjects are impressive, you know. They, the teacher gives them the information, the kid gives it back. The closer they give it back to how they got it, the higher their grade goes, right? Us, we ask them to give to it. I, I do administrator conferences. Ooh, boy, that, for that kind of fun, you can put a fork in your head because it feels good when you pull it out. I'm kind of teasing, just kind of, right? But I <clears throat> heard administrators say, well, you know, you're right. You know, music teachers and coaches are a lot alike. Mm, in some ways, but only if you get to play does the coach make a difference, right? If you're on the bench or you got cut, it's not the same. Music will take anybody. If you can fog a mirror, we'll get you, we'll get you in there somewhere. Well, I like I don't know how to count. Well, we have a percussion section. Get back there. I'm a percussionist, so I can make. <laughs> But I'm all kind. So here's the next one I hear all the time. <clears throat> all men are created equal. Boy, not in my ear training class. I don't know about yours. <laughs> I sat beside a girl that had perfect pitch. Yeah. So when, when we they would do dictation, I mean, it was probably harder for her to write her name than to identify those notes. Me, I'm sitting beside her going, <clears throat> Here comes a bride. Ha, 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 ha. I got a fourth. I got a fourth. Yay. We weren't equal. We weren't equal. So, you know, it's and it's in the direct Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. What are they talking about? Some have glasses, some don't. Right. And here's what I think it is. It's time. 24 hours a day. You got more? Boy, if you have more, tell me how you got it, because I'd like to have a few more. It's time. And what's interesting about time is if we don't use it, we lose it. We can't bank it. We can't put it on the shelf. We can't save it for a rainy day. And you know what? During this whole COVID mess, you know who doesn't care at all? Father time. Just ticking along. So regardless of what's going on around us, 
We got to make use of this time. You get it? I was doing a, a professional development session and great teachers, by the way. And, and they're, and we're, they're, we're planning this and how could we do this? And they're brainstorming and coming up with just, just some phenomenal things, just some phenomenal things. And every time somebody suggests something, she's like, oh, no, we can't do that. Oh, no, that would never work. And there's a lot of eye rolling and all this. And finally, we took a break. And I said, everybody, go get some coffee or the bathroom, whatever you want to do. And I asked her, I said, would you stay for just a second? And she's like, yeah. I said, what's going on with you? What? You know, everybody's trying as hard as they can. Why is everything not working? She, now, I can't do this as well as she did. Let's see if I can try. Well, I didn't sign on to teach in a pandemic. I'm like, well, my God, who did? Lady, nobody did. We're, it's raining on all of us right now. I mean, did you, when they give you your contract, did you say, well, excuse me, could you add, please teach during a pandemic? No. You're in there though. I mean, if nothing else, this conference proves it. Because the, the, the first thing that everybody should have done would be shut it down, right? Cancel it. It's not going to work. But look what's happening. And God, you got great officers. Oh, my Lord. James has been great. Scotty, I know you're on here and you know I love you. You're a brother. Because we, we have given up giving up. And there are some benefits to this. And I'll talk about those in a little bit. But let's talk about let's talk about what makes a great music teacher. <laughs> this comes <clears throat> after 40 years of being a gypsy. For 40 years, I've been traveling around all over. I've been in every state um, and, and with great music teachers like you, great music teachers. <clears throat> and so what is it? What is that magic that you have? Right. Is it because you were the first in your class in college or? All that, no, no, you know, you graduated Kumbaya or whatever that thing is. No, 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 that's not it. It's much deeper than that. So I got three things that I've noticed about all of them. They all get to the destination in a different direction, right? Different classroom management, different, different ways they set up their curriculum, different ways they deal with kids, <clears throat> but they all get there to these three parts of this destination recipe. All right. So several years ago, I was uh, in a thing called a think tank. You know what a think tank is? A think tank is when they put a bunch of people in the room and they give you a, um, a, an inquisition, a question, and you're supposed to come out with an answer that everybody agrees on. And it's supposed to be short, concise, elevator speech type thing. <clears throat> so the, the inquiry was, what makes a great music teacher? Assuming that they are already a good musician. All right. And frankly, if we got through college, we're probably we're probably in good shape there. Right. What makes a great music teacher? Assuming they're great musicians. <clears throat> so we would come out with these flowery, you know, platitudes <laughs> and they go, no, 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 go back. In. That's way that's way too much. It's got to be boom like that. After four days, here's what we came up with. The ability to create a trusting relationship with a student. Because unless that's there, all of the other is never going to get there. And you all know that. You've all been around great musicians that just couldn't get along with other people. You've all, all been around. You probably went to school with, with people who were great musicians. When they went out and taught, mm -mm, it didn't work. Because teaching itself is an art. You, you're so important. And... I, clearly, I think you can be the most important teacher in the school for that kid. Because for some of them, you're home. You're the safest place in their life. And I don't want them to be in band, choir, orchestra. And I don't want them to be there for all of that stuff. I want them to be there for great music. That's selfish, Tim. That's what I want. But if we're getting all this other with it, take it. I happened to come from a, a little farm town in Indiana. And, and, and my wife, in fact, my wife and I went first grade together. Oh, man, that's <laughs> in pretty tight, isn't it? But our, our choir teacher, Miss Sellers, I've talked about Miss Sellers. There was 212 in our little country school. 202 of them were in the choir. Why? 
Miss Sellers is why. And by the way, she will always be Miss Sellers. I couldn't call the lady by her first name if I had to. I, I, I worship her. 212. 212 in the school, 202 in the choir, are you kidding? And we had barbershop quartets and the girls' choir and the men's glee club. And and I grew up just thinking that's what everybody was around. You know, you go to school, you're in the choir. You didn't have any choice. And by the way, if you ever come to that art mecca of Bluffton, Indiana, and you go to any church, when it comes time to sing the hymn, you will see everybody hold their hymnal correctly. Because of Miss Sellers. She taught us how to do that, you see. And by the way, they don't just hold it. They sing. And they sing their part. Because Miss Sellers taught us music literacy. And you were supposed to retire at that time in, <clears throat> in Indiana at 70. It was mandatory retirement. She taught till she was 84. Because everybody in school was scared to fire her. Because they'd all been her students. And so when she finally did retire... They hired two and a half people to take her job because the program was so huge. Yeah? And the first year, the choir went down to just a little over 100. And then it was down to 60 and then to 35. And there's no choir at that school anymore. And there are file drawers that are packed with great music. What's missing? Miss Sellers. Miss Sellers is missing. Miss Sellers changed a community so when i hear people say well tim i know all your positive stuff yeah right right but i'm only one person tim i can't make a difference i'm only one person and that's the only thing that does make a difference is one person we're all here because one person or one person's that's why we're here the trust relationship we all loved her <clears throat> I always knew, I always knew as a music teacher that I could, I could get kids in close, but I had no idea the power a music teacher had until my wife and I went through this thing. And, and you know, you were going to figure this out. I'm not a keynote speaker. I'm a storyteller, right? Because I'm one of you. I, in fact, I still teach and I love it. <clears throat> I'm, my wife and I don't have any children, but we pick up students along the way yeah, that maybe they can't live with their families right now or something's wrong and so they hang with us and then we mainstream them a little bit. I had this little girl. She's in the fifth grade, Mallory, right? So she comes home and we're having dinner and she says to Andrea, my wife, she said, Aunt Andy, we're not her aunt and uncle, that's what she called us. She said, Aunt Andy, she said, they're going to have band in school. Should I be in the band? Well, my God, I am coming right up over the end of that table and my wife, who's far smarter than I am. She's a psychologist. She's going, uh-uh, uh-uh. And afterwards, I said, why didn't you let me say something? She said, Tim, that's her decision, not your decision. And I'm like, no 11-year-old can make a decision like that. I will. She said, let's just back off. Let's see what happens. So the next night, we're, we're sitting there eating. Mallory didn't say a word about it. Finally, I couldn't stand it. I said, hey, hey, Mal. I said, you mentioned that band thing last night. Whatever happened to that? She goes, oh, she said it was great. She said they came and in the class and they said, anybody that's interested in band, come with us. And they took us down to the band room. And she said, Uncle Tim, she said they had all the instruments stacked up and you could go try each one to see if, you, if you're going to do it. I said, you're going to do it? She goes, yeah, that's my girl. Yes. I said, Mallory, what instrument did you decide that you wanted to play? She said, the flute. Oh, God, no, not the flute. Did you try the oboe, the bassoon, the French horn? She said, yeah, I tried all of them. She said, I don't like them. And I said, well, sweetie, people that play them professionally don't necessarily like them. We're talking about scholarship. Right. So anyway, that night, Andrea goes, what makes a difference what she plays? I said, you're in Indiana, Andrea. She's going to end up being a flag girl in the marching band. Trust me, that's what. <laughs> so anyway, this is the point of this thing. Her band director, who's great, phenomenal. This is the power this man has over her, right? You ready for it? <clears throat> so I said, <clears throat> okay, she's going to play flute. We get her a good flute, right? We, we, we have flute lessons. She's not going to sit in the back and just toot along with everybody. So she comes home from her first flute lesson. She's got her Essential Elements book, her beginning band book. And she's all excited about this. 
And she goes, and Andy, she said, you're not going to believe this. She said, one of the guys that wrote this book has the same name Uncle Tim has. <laughs> my wife said, sweetie, that is your Uncle Tim. She goes, no, it's not. She said, my band director said that that guy's dead. I'm not making this up. I'm not that smart. So he has got this. He's got her right upon his hand. So now we go. Through. She goes to high school. First chair flute. Yeah. Freshman year. That's my girl. So I come home her sophomore year. I'd been out in one of my little tours. I come home and there's a flag leaning up against the wall. And I said, Mallory, come here. So what is that? She goes, call the flag. No, no, God, I know what it is. Jesus. Why is it in our home? Because Mr. Hassell, her band director, she loves it. He said I could make more of a difference during marching band as a flag because I have a good sense of time than another flute. And I'm like, well, he didn't buy you a $3,000 pipe to blow on. So we get through that one. Junior year or junior year, I come home, <laughs> one of my tours, and I go in and on the counter is a clarinet. I said, Mount, come here. I said, I know what it is before I ask you. Why is it here? The band director. The band director said that we need more clarinets to balance out the band. Would somebody be willing to jump over and learn to play clarinet and beef up that section? I'm like, your first chair flute. Wants to please her band director. Had nothing to do with the flute. Had to do with pleasing him. So I hear her squeaking and squawking in the room. I go in and she's crying. And I said, let me see the clarinet. She gave it to me. And I, it, it was a piece of junk. I said, go ask him what kind of flute you should have. So she comes home the next day and she's got a piece of paper. Yeah. She goes, here it is, Buffett. And I said, it's not, it's not a Buffett clarinet. It's a buffet clarinet he wants. And you're not getting a buffet clarinet. And boy, she's like, well, why? Well, I said, there's two reasons. One, they're incredibly expensive. Number two, Uncle Tim works for Con Selmer. So <laughs> that would be... <gasps> But my band director said. So I bought her a buffet clarinet. Is that unbelievable? That is the power that you have. She wanted to be an elementary teacher. Yeah. Where should I go to college? I said, Ball State's right down the road, sweetheart. It's number four in the nation for elementary. It's, it's one of the best. People come from all over the world. Good in here. Good in here. Her senior year, I come home, she's got a Ball State sweatshirt on. I said, what's it about? She goes, I talked to my band director. He thinks that's a good school for me to attend. That's the power you have. Isn't it great? The music teacher overrode the guy that helps make the instruments, the guy that wrote the book, <laughs> the guy that taught at the college. He's no. you. And you're all that wonderful band director. And I love the man. So. The ability to create trusting relationships. That's the first one. Here's the second one. <clears throat> this is going to sound silly when I say it. <clears throat> the ego drives us. Yeah. The ego is what got us here and got us through piano proficiency and all that other stuff. We just, we're not going to, we're going to get that thing one way or another and whatever it takes. Right. I'll get through instrumentation class. The ego drives us but it can also get in the way. And what I have noticed about those of you who are here, and you're the great ones, that's why you're here in the first place, is you've learned to tame it. It's still there. I mean, we're, we're animals, right? We have to have it, survival. But you've tamed it. Because, And we all know there's people in the profession that their ego is the reason they're doing it instead of because of the students and the music, right? <clears throat> the great ones have pulled that meter back. And it's right there. And it's hard to tame your ego because we've worked hard. I mean, you've got a lot invested in this crazy thing. Yeah. Back to <clears throat> my wife and I, we were at a, a yard sale. I have no idea why she wants to go to a yard sale. I mean, somebody else's junk is now her treasure. Right. <clears throat> so we're there. And, and I hear she goes, hey, Tim, come here, come here. And I walked over and on the table in this yard sale was was. <laughs> It was one of my books. <laughs> and Andrew's pointing to it and just laughing. <laughs> They're going to sell your book. So I said to the lady behind, I said, uh, how much for the book? She said, a quarter. A quarter? And I'm thinking, my God, you know how much 
time I spent writing. <laughs> I said, really? A quarter? She goes, okay, a dime. No, 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 man. You are going the wrong direction. I said, really, a dime? She just took it, hand it to me. She goes, here, take it. It's not that good anyways. <laughs> you go, forget it. She, you know, she didn't want the book. Let it go. It's not a big deal. Taming that ego. <clears throat> we all have students that we love and admire. And so I'm, I'm name dropping when I do this. <clears throat> One of my former students, uh, Larry Lang, was director of the United States Air Force Band in D.C., Colonel Lang. And just, I got to love the kid. He was the drum major of the band and all that stuff. And <clears throat> so a few years ago, he called and he's like, uh, the band's going to play at the American Band Masters Association uh, conference. And he said, I would, I would like you to guest conduct the band. This is a musical Ferrari. These people are unbelievable. They're so good. And I said, oh, my God. I said, thank you. He said, yeah, I said, thank you for agreeing to do it. He said, you'll be one of several guest conductors. <laughs> I'm like, what's your next question, right? Who? <laughs> now, I wrote him down. You can check on this. H. Robert Reynolds, were you band directors? You know that name. Colonel Holton from the Army Band. Gene Corporon. <laughs> Craig Kirchhoff. Jason Fettig from the Marine Band. And Richard Floyd. Those were the other guest conductors. And he read that name and my ego just goes, <laughs> And I said, oh, Larry, I said, I'm not in that league. He goes, well, of course you're not. You're in a league by yourself. You're my teacher. <sighs> oh, he was going to make it in spite of me, not because of me. But isn't that unbelievable that 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 connection is still there and for you and your own teachers don't you still call them dr so and so or mrs so and so or mr so and so and just can't get that first name out even though they may, they may have asked you to do it that's the reverence a music teacher has and by golly you're not gonna let a virus get in your way we'll work around that some way we'll find something to do we'll teach music regardless even if they shut down the crazy zoom We'll find a way because we're music teachers. I don't even think we ever go to work. We just <laughs> go get ready for the next event, right? I, I look at that and I go, Tim, get your ego out of the way. Do whatever you can to help. Do whatever you can to serve. So trusting relationship, ability to tame the ego. So what's the third one? <clears throat> and when I say it, you're going to go, Tim, that doesn't make any sense at all. Here's, the, here's the, the third part of the trifecta. Now, listen carefully. The ability to create what isn't. It doesn't sound, it doesn't make any sense, does it? The ability to create what isn't. A great music teacher will go into a situation and they'll create what isn't. What isn't might be, I don't know, a clean room. What is it might be good intonation. What is it might be the risers fixed. What is it might be we got new instruments. What is it might be the, the connection with the administration or the community or the parents. That's what you do. You create what isn't while maintaining what has already been there. Because we know this. We, we all have countless examples of people who had a great program, they left, somebody came, else came in, down it went, as I was talking about, because they couldn't maintain it. And we all know people that went into bonfires, really toxic waste dumps musically, and bang, all of a sudden we've got this music. They created what isn't. That's what you do. And I, you know, we, we all know the, the musical... The, the music man, yeah, you all know that the theme. <clears throat> Harold Hill, yeah, where he goes into the town, he convinces all the people. Talk about trust relationships. He convinces all the people that their their sons and their daughters are gonna, you know, burn in hell if they don't get something for them to do, so they aren't at the pool hall and blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> and he's 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 selling them instruments. I mean, that's his scam. He's a charlatan, right? It's all a charade, right? <laughs> And these people, the parents are all jazzed about it, right? And they buy the instruments. Well, the librarian in town is also the music teacher. She teaches piano. 
It doesn't take her long to figure out he doesn't know what he's doing. Right. But in the process of this, they fall in love. She falls in love with him. Right? And he hangs around longer to get uniforms and keeps perpetuating this and holding back. Oh, I don't ever want him to hear it because I haven't taught him anything. And then finally, at the end, you all know how the ending is. They come to the end and, and the, the people in the town realize that they've been taken and all the people are around. And here's all the little kids sitting over here with their uniforms on their hats are all like this. And they've got tarn feathers ready to get them. And he said, if you're who you say you are and you taught those kids music, let's hear it. And remember, he used the think system. <laughs> and he turns around, looks at him, and he goes, think. <laughs> and he drops the baton. And this sound, this cacophony of sound comes out. It's horrible. And I'm like, he's dead. He's dead, except then they go behind the eyes of the parents and they hear 76 trombones and they see the band marching down the street. Really? You get it? So was he really a charlatan? Because he could do some of the parts the rest of us struggle to do. We can teach him the music. That's for sure. He taught him to be mission oriented. He taught them to develop that part of themselves that says, I can do anything, which, of course, is applicable to every part of life. Why do you think every university wants music kids? Because they know you've taught them to finish what they start. You, they know those kids will go the extra mile. They know, they know they'll put in the extra effort. The creatures of habit. You've taught them those habits. You know, they always go, all the smart kids are in music. That's not true. What is true is once they join music, they become the smart kids. Now, what parents going to say no to that? No, I don't want my child. I don't want their I don't want their academic grades to go up and then and all the brain and neurology stuff. Now, if you haven't seen it, get online, check it out. It's amazing what happens to the mind and how it builds when there's music involved. Why are Alzheimer's patients that can't remember their, their wife's name but can still sing a song with all the words because it's in a different part of the mind, the way the, way the mind myelinates those mind maps? Haven't it happened to you? You know, you took algebra in high school. Could you pass an algebra test right now? But you can drive down the road and hear a song you haven't heard for five years and sing it because Music makes everything better. Not to mention, it's a universal language. And not to mention, if those kids don't have a way to express themselves with music, it's going to come out somewhere else. And some of the options aren't really good. Every child is born with the propensity to make music. That's why you elementary music teachers are so important. Because if we don't get them between about 9 and 13, right in there, you ready? We're not going to get them. They don't, they learn music in school. They don't learn on the internet, right? They learn music in school. They learn music from you. And it changes lives. It makes people better people. Now you've got this whole parent thing. And I often wonder if we tap into that for what it's worth. <clears throat> um, during the fall, except this fall, I work for an organization called Bands for America, Music for All, right? And I, they have these little marching band championships all over, right? And my job is I go to the gate where the band shows up and I get them. Scotty, how many times have we done this one, brother? And, and, and I get them and I get them on the field and get them started. And then I run back and get the next group. So several years ago, it was in Houston, Texas. It's so hot, you couldn't breathe. We were on AstroTurf. We've got the valedictorian and the salutatorian out there with wool uniforms in and chains under their hat. Right? <laughs> it's so silly. And the parents are spraying them and all this sort of thing, right? So I was getting the band set up, and there was a dad on the other side, you know, the hernia crew that pulls out all the props and the xylophones and rims. And so he's on the other side. He's got a timpani, and he's running around, and he's screaming, I don't know where to put it. I don't know where to put it. Oh, my God. What am I supposed to be doing? So I, I calmed him down. I said, you're okay. I said, what? Here. Well, if I put it on the line, we get a penalty. You're not going to get a penalty. 
you're fine. Are you an official? I'll be whatever you want me to be right now. So, yeah. And I said, and I'm trying to calm him down, right? I said, no, is it your son or your daughter? Oh, it's my son. Oh, my God. He's a percussionist. I've, I've never been this. I am so nervous. I just, I, I don't know what I'm. I said, you stand back here and you watch your son. I said, you're going to be so proud. So then I trits over to the other part of the field and the director is standing over there and he's just cracking up. He said, Tim, do you, do you know who you were just talking to? I said, yeah. I said, it's one of your band dads. He's confused where he put the timpani. He said, that's Lieutenant Colonel Lindsay. He's the next captain in the shuttle going up. Say what? He doesn't know where to put the drum. We're going to give this guy a $2 billion airplane to fly around that we paid for. Well, I never met an astronaut. So the minute we're done, I'm running to get to this guy to get his autograph. Yeah. And he's running towards me and he gives me a hug, man. I'm, and I, and I said, you're Lieutenant Colonel Lindsay. He goes, yeah. Well, I said, my God, what are you doing out here? I said, we have a lot of money invested in you. Shouldn't you be sequestered someplace special? He said, I'm doing the most important thing in my life. He said, I'm supporting my kid. The most important thing in the parent's life, supporting their kid. And you make their kids better kids. You're right, Jessica. Isn't that funny, Ernie? Pete? Amazing, isn't it? So... Before we wrap this up and I get out of your face, first of all, again, just thanks for doing this. I, I look at what you do and, you know, I'm an old man. And I stand back and I go, is it just because, Tim, you're a musician and, and you're, you're biased about? No, no. I do all teacher in-service programs. You know, they bring the whole faculty together and I blah, blah, blah at them for a while. Still, music teachers are different. I can pick you out in the crowd before we ever start because it's different. I think a lot of, and I'm not diminishing any other teacher, by the way. They're, I mean, to teach seventh grade math, the same thing every year. Are you kidding me? God bless those people who do that. I'm talking about that magic that you have that we can't identify, that we can't seem to teach. It's just there. Where, where you sense a kid is having a bad day, and on the way out, you go, hey, Sarah, what's going on? You okay? And she bursts into tears. Well, my parents are getting a divorce. Sarah, come on in here. I'll give you a pass for the next class. Come on in the office to know. You tell me about yourself. Because you make them important. You make your administrators important. You make the parents important. You flip the mirror and give. Music teachers are givers. That's why we're music teachers in the first place. Because we have a language that everybody can understand. And everybody can feel it. I know. Somebody said the other day, well, what would you do? If you, you know, you could start all over again and be a music teacher. <laughs> Why wouldn't we do anything else? And again, I'm going to come back and, and I don't want to, I don't want to lighten the situation that we're in right now with this virus thing. You're doing magic. My God. But you know what? There's some advantages to it. There, you know, the virtual thing. Now, I'd rather be there in person. I hope it happens someday. But we get to do this. We still can connect with our kids, right? We can we can emphasize things that we would have never emphasized before because we didn't have time. We're getting ready for the concert or whatever, right? You can communicate in different ways. You can get your leadership team to communicate with the younger ones and coordinate and recruit and there's all, because that time is still the same. It's still 24 hours. And you know, when you get old, that time becomes pretty precious. I told my, my class the other day, in fact, one of my, my very best students in the world, she's behind the scenes here, Ronnie Alcara, she's making sure that I can still stay on screen. 
And, and the school that she went to is uh, Butler. It's where I teach part-time uh, a leadership class. And I said to them the other night, I said, I will give anybody in this class a million dollars. Boy, that got their attention. Up they come on the edge of their seats. If you can, and they're like, give me 10 years of life. I'll trade you a million dollars for a decade. You can't do it. So again, I bolster you. I highlight you. I spotlight you to go. Yeah, I always think you're the most important teacher. But at this time, it's elevated to a higher level because you know what? They'll stay on that chemistry online on you know for a while and then they'll punch so they can't the teacher can't see them and then the microphone goes off and you don't know if they're a playstation or on their phones but with you god they want to please you didn't you want to please your teacher didn't you want to please your music teacher yeah and don't you still today want to yeah so when we started this out what was it, about 40 minutes ago I said, how many of you are here because of a music teacher? And when I say that, I want you to think about this. Do you remember what they taught you? Or do you remember the way they taught you? Now, the, the answer should be yes, right? But most of us remember the way. And the way is what got us to the what, not vice versa. It was the context that got us to the content. So, and I said, can you see that teacher in your mind? And you're like, yeah, yeah, sure. Miss so-and-so. Yeah, I can see him. The last time I was at LMEA was in 1985. <laughs> I can remember it, right? And I asked that group the same question. And I told that group, I said, someday I'll probably get to come back, I hope. And when I asked those teachers, who's the teacher that made a difference for you? I said, they'll see you. And they went, oh, Tim, for heaven's sakes, that's so silly. But you just you just saw a bunch of them. And you know what? Years will go by. And there'll be another LMEA. And there'll be some speaker that will say, how many of you are here because of a music teacher? And the hands will go up. And then they'll say, can you see that teacher's face in your mind? And they'll see you. They're looking at you right now. They want to be like you. So wherever you are right now in dealing with all the stuff that's going on, they're right behind you. They're riding shotgun because they trust you. They trust you. They know for sure that you're doing this for them and not for yourself. And they know when we all get back together on the other side of this mountain, you'll continue to create what isn't. I got to thank all my wonderful friends at LMEA. God bless you. I love to come and visit that part of the world. And my friends at Con Selmer, who uh, are the ones that supported this. And Rania, God bless you. I love you. Know that to you. And you know what? You all know this. If you want or need anything, you get to me. And I'll bust my chops to make sure you have it. All right. Have a great remainder of the convention. I'll see some of you later on when we're with Frank and Eric. Have a great Thanksgiving.